Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we actually have a lot to discuss. From Travis Kelsey bringing a very special gift to Taylor in Paris, we have Taylor Swift on a new song coming out very soon. Did Taylor name drop Ryan Reynolds' fourth child's baby name in her new album? And we're going to touch into the debate about whether or not fans should bring their young children to the era's tour. A lot to get into. So let's jump right in, starting off with this special gift that Travis Kelsey brought Taylor Swift in Paris from the Kentucky Derby. So the week before Travis flew to Paris to see the final Paris era's tour show, we know that Travis went to both the Kentucky Derby and the Formula One race in Miami. Now, while he was at the Kentucky Derby, he was actually gifted a very special piece of jewelry for one Miss Taylor Swift. So the um, the family that makes the Derby trophies, which is the um, SR Blackington family, I believe, um, gifted Taylor and gave it to Travis to give to Taylor a diamond horseshoe necklace that retails for close to $1,500. So it's not a, not a cheap piece of jewelry. Um, they made this necklace from 14 karat gold sourced from the production of this year's Kentucky Derby trophy. Uh, and they gave it to Travis to give to Taylor because, of course, Taylor couldn't be at the Kentucky Derby due to the fact that she was preparing for the Eras Tour. So this necklace is beautiful, by the way. As I said, it was, it's a horseshoe with six diamonds in the horseshoe. And then on the bottom of the horseshoe, it says, wishing you good luck. Because obviously a horseshoe, people wear a horseshoe for good luck. That's a, a symbol of good luck. Um, so Travis supposedly brought it from the States to Paris to give to Taylor Swift. And so if we see Taylor out and about wearing this beautiful diamond horseshoe necklace, we all will know where it came from and how it got onto the neck of one Miss Taylor Swift. Um, okay, moving on to another really exciting piece of news, which is that Taylor Swift is going to be featured on Gracie Abrams' new album that is coming out next month, June 21st. So for those who don't know Gracie, I'm sure if you're a Taylor Swift fan, you do. Gracie is a young, aspiring, well, not even as aspiring. She's, she's officially made it. <laughs> Singer, songwriter. She's also the daughter of famed director, Hollywood mogul, essentially, J.J. Abrams. Um, and Gracie opened for Taylor Swift on the Eras Tour um, for a good chunk of her shows. And uh, they became very close over the last year or so. Again, probably mostly because they were touring together um, so closely. And Gracie announced earlier this week that she, she put out the track listing for her new album, which is called The Secret of Us. And in that track listing, it was revealed that, yes, Taylor Swift is featuring on one of the songs. So Taylor will be on um, the fifth song of the record, which is called Us. Um, and this is big for a number of reasons. One is Taylor doesn't do that many features. She has done features before, mostly on songs with her friends. So she's been on the Heim song, Gasoline. She did the remake of that song, which by the way, I love that remix of that song. Or I guess it's not really a remix, but I guess it kind of is. I don't know, but I think it's great. She did a song with Aaron Desner's band, The National. She's done songs with Ed Sheeran before. Like she did a song with uh, Tim McGraw years ago, John Mayer. We know that. So she's done a handful of features, but not as many as maybe you would think she would do. Um, and probably that is mostly because she is Taylor Swift and she's such a big, huge star that like her featuring on a song almost takes away from the artist because she's such a massive star. Um, but I think it's really cool that Taylor is featuring on an artist album who, yes, Gracie has had a lot of success, especially in the last year or two. Obviously opening for Taylor Swift is like a giant milestone and that sends you up another, I don't know, like that definitely, you become a bigger artist when you open for Taylor Swift. There's no question about it, but she had a lot of fans prior to opening for Taylor Swift. But I think for Taylor to be on a song with a friend of hers, but then it also kind of helps boost and lift up this younger artist who 
is at the beginning of her journey and her career. And so I think that's super cool. I think another big reason why Taylor decided to do it is because on this record, Gracie worked with Aaron Desner, who we know obviously has worked with Taylor Swift on the last handful of albums and has produced a lot of great music for Taylor. And so it kind of makes sense. I feel like that's how it always happens, right? Like friends are in the studio together and they're like, hey, let's just see if Taylor would be interested in being on this song. And um, so I'm assuming that that's kind of how it all worked itself out. But it's very exciting. So June 21st, we'll get to hear a new Taylor Swift song, kind of. Um, and I'll be curious to see how much Taylor's actually in the song. Like, is it, does she have a verse? Is she just doing backing vocals? I guess we'll find out on June 21st. Okay, moving on to our next piece of news, which is that uh, Ryan Reynolds is joking about the fact that Taylor Swift may or may not have dropped his fourth child's baby name in her new album. So as we know, Taylor in folklore, I believe, because yeah, I was on on the song Betty, Taylor name dropped all three at that time, because they just had three, three um, daughters at the time, all three of Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively's daughter's names in the song Betty, Betty, James, and Inez. Um, and it was the first time actually that we, I don't remember, we we knew James's name. We we knew who James was, but I'm not sure if we knew, and I think we knew Inez, but we didn't know the name of their third daughter who is now, who now we know is named Betty. And so that was like the big reveal was, oh my gosh, Taylor has revealed their third child's name in this song. So I think a lot of people felt like with um, Torture Poets Department, because Ryan and Blake had their fourth child in February, 2023, that maybe Taylor would name drop their fourth baby's name in this album. Well, Ryan Reynolds was on the Today Show and was asked about this. And he said, we always wait for Taylor to tell us what the child's name is. And I'll say this, we're still waiting. So obviously he's joking about this, but this makes me think the way that he's worded this makes me think that Taylor did not name check the baby on the album. Um, And also she names a lot of people. She has a lot of names in the record, she says Hannah and Sarah and Sam and Marcus and Chloe and Robin and Peter. Like she, she has a lot of names, but we know that given the fact that Ryan and Blake named their kids James, Inez, Betty, like they kind of like more, not that Betty's unusual, but they, they, I don't know, they don't go for the obvious name. Um, so I think we are still waiting. We also don't even know if the child's a boy or a girl yet. Like they've, they've, the baby is now over a year old um, and we still don't know any of the details. So I guess we'll have to keep waiting to see um, what the name of the fourth baby is. Maybe we'll find out on a different album. Who knows? Okay, our final piece of news is more of a, it's more of a question or... I don't even want to say a debate. Maybe it is a debate to some people, but I wanted to talk about, because I feel like it's kind of taken off on social media. I've seen lots of lots of articles about it. So if you missed it over the weekend, there was a viral picture that went around, again, Twitter, social media, of a baby lying on the ground of the um, Taylor Swift, of, of the stadium where Taylor Swift performed on the floor. So like the baby's being surrounded. This is obviously before the, the, the show started, but the baby's kind of lying down on like a jacket or something while a bunch of other people are standing around waiting for the show to begin. And it's created a lot of discourse on the internet. People saying that the parents shouldn't have brought their baby. And, the, and I want to say too, the child was probably like a year and a half, two years old, some somewhere in that range. Like it wasn't like a super, super young baby, but it was definitely... And it, it was a toddler, if if not even, I don't know, like, I would guess the child was between one or two. Um, a lot of discourse about should the parents have even brought the baby to the concert? Like, was this safe for the child? All this stuff. And I think it was an interesting question, an interesting discourse, because we know in Europe, in the States, when you're on the floor, even in a big stadium, there are assigned seats, right? So like we all have our specific seats. We know where we're going to be and sit or stand for the show. But in Europe and also in other international, I mean, this is basically how it is everywhere else in the world, except for in the States, the floor is GA. So it's first come, first serve. You can stand wherever you want, um, which is good and bad. Good because fans 
whoever, you know, who, who, who gets to the stadium first gets the, the best seat. So it kind of rewards um, the most diehard fans. It gives them the chance to actually get the best seat in the house. It also allows you to move around as a fan. If you need to go get some air, you can move to the back, you can move around, which is great. But it also creates a lot of clustering and it can get very tight and very congested and very um, difficult to move around because people are packed in like sardines, basically, all trying to get to the front and all trying to have the best, the best view. And on one hand, parents should be allowed to do what they want with their kids. Obviously, they can make their own decisions as to whether or not they want to bring their baby to this concert. I personally feel like there should probably be an age requirement to be on the floor. Now, we know that for, I think it's under 18, um, people have to be accompanied by their parents to be on the floor, which makes sense. But I still even think there should be, it doesn't matter if you're with your parent or not, no child you know, under the age of like five or something. I don't know what the number is, but they should have a number that no child should be on the floor because it's kind of a safety risk. Again, because it's so tight, it's so congested. We we know people pass out. They, It's just not always safe. And so um, again, like I don't want to judge these parents for making this decision and parents can do what they want, but I do feel like it's probably for the best to not have an infant on the floor. But I'd be very curious to know what you guys think in the comments. If you've seen the photo, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know your thoughts because I do think it's it's a nuanced conversation and I think there's lots of different opinions and sides to the conversation. So I would love to know what you all think about this debate, if we, if we even want to call it a debate. I don't know. Anyway, that is that for today's show. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts, your feelings, your concerns about all the things I discussed here today. As always, please subscribe to our channel. It means so much to me. Follow us on social media and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.